Thank you. Thank you, David. Thank you, everyone, for having us here today. We're very happy, very honored. Um, I'm sorry, I have a very, I was very nervous, so I, ha I developed a very bad cold. So I'm sorry if I cough and it hurts your ears. Um, so I'm, my name is Tatiana, and I'm 29 years old, I'm half French, half Filipina, and the very proud co-owner of a four months old restaurant called Le Servant, which uh, I opened with my lovely sister, Katia, who takes care of everything else that's not cooking and our business partner, Edward, without whom nothing would have been possible. Um, so, it's, we seat 40 people and we work à la carte. It's seven of us working there, so it's a very small structure. And it's been open, as I said, for only four months, so it's a, it's a baby, basically. Uh, the past 10 years in Paris, uh, lots of uh, young chefs have opened many new bistros where they propose uh, exceptional produce and very creative food for an affordable price. And parallel to the, uh, parallel must, I mean, at the same time, um, chefs all over the world and in Paris uh, have been getting so much attention. And it seems that what used to be a very blue color profession is shifting to something a little bit more glamorous. and. It's a, it's a very interesting time to be a chef now because things are changing and even when I started, which was barely 10 years ago, I never could have imagined things would go so fast. So, um, when you start a restaurant, everything is very, very scary and um, time and timing is in the middle of everything. It's like everything goes so fast and you just can't get a hold of things. So for me, this is, this is what this was about, time and how you work with it. So working with hours, work hours that go too fast and then uh, working with your own past and tradition to fit in the present and the time you're, you're in, but also building the future. So um, two years ago, my sister and I had the first talk on what we wanted to do, on, on what we wanted to build, um, and we didn't really have an idea of what that was. Uh, but we knew that we wanted to work together and support each other and do something on our own to sustain ourselves. So after going through lots of different phases and very different ideas, we started looking for an old cafe or something casual um, where we could make something that resembled us because that's what, that's what it was about. It was about doing something that resembled us and that reflected what we loved and what we, what we knew, what we thought good. So, um, that was very scary. That was maybe the scariest thing of all because you feel like you're showing yourself to everyone and giving, sh showing the most intimate things about yourself and also exposing yourself to judgment as of what you're capable of doing. And that's, that's very, very, very scary. Um, so um, <clears throat> what was interesting is that all the ideas that we could have had, that we had before the opening of the restaurant were mostly never, mostly never happened. I mean, we, we had lots of prefixed things in mind and none of it just came true because things are actually so spontaneous and so, so driven by your mood and the people you're with and, and what you feel like. So, it was actually very interesting because we, I think, I, I say we because I speak for both of us, but uh, we learned a lot about ourselves in the past four months, maybe more than, more than ever. So the first, the first week of the, rest of the opening, I remember thinking, I can't wait to be in three months. This is too new. This is too hard. This is too new. This is completely crazy. And in those first weeks, um, all the press came, uh, all the journalists were here, lunch and dinner, and it was like every service you were being judged, 
And it's a, there's a huge gap between what you feel when you're, it's an embryo of a restaurant, nothing is fixed yet, you're not even sure of what direction you're, you're taking. And people are already here waiting for something to be completely done and completely finished. And it's, it's completely, it's very scary and it's very, it's sometimes very frustrating to think that people make, make up their minds so early on when you feel like you're, you're just at the very, very beginning of something. And it's also, there's another, another huge gap there. Um, it's that uh, you live in a, in a very closed bubble and you work really long hours with six people, always the same, and you're very focused. And then when, when, you, when you take a, a breath and look out and you, you realize how much exposure you actually get, that's just, it's, it's crazy, and though I, I was in a good position to imagine that, I didn't realize things would go so fast and would be so would would be so important and so so it's a good thing because it does um, it does fill up the restaurant from day two, which is I think something new in in the restaurant business now is that restaurants can they become full from day two from an article or and <clears throat> and so, that's a, it's a good thing you can't. I mean, you can't deny. But uh, but it's also it's also hard because you you feel like it exposes you to s much more judgment maybe than it used to, and everyone is here to judge you, and that's something that's very very difficult to to take at first. I mean, to to support. So. Um, by by the time the two first weeks were over, the press had already come and that was done. So we could move on with uh, feeding real clients and uh, cooking for real people who wanted to eat, which was a relief and and it was ve it was a very good thing. Uh, our image was already fixed because the whole press had done it for us. We don't have any Facebook or Instagram or anything. So because we thought that we sh should focus on some things that were more uh, of our competence and we didn't really know how, how to use those things to our advantage. We thought we'd focus on cooking and taking care of our, of our small little business, but there's this whole image of the restaurant that was built without us. And what's interesting is that it's always the same thing. It's, there, there weren't, we, we made no press release, no, and what comes out is always the same thing. So, I think that's a, that's a good thing, but I'm not sure. Um, so, in the, in the two first months, we lost part of our team. I think that's uh, something everyone who opens a restaurant uh, goes through, and though it's, it was for the best for everyone. It was very, very scary so early on to have to start everything over again and, and teach again, especially after realizing how bad a teacher I was and how complicated it was doing all these things at the same time. So um, all this turnover made me realize the importance of manpower and the, the importance of the people you work with and, this is really what f what made the opening and the, which, what made the food what it was at that time. It was who the people were, who we were, and and also what we were capable of doing given all the constraints. So constraints was al has always been for me something something of a of a. Um, it's a good thing. It's a it's a motor. It, it's something that helps you make make choices and. It's the people who you work with, um, what they're willing or capable of doing, and it's also season and time and and material, place, and all of those things are rather than inspiration. What the constraint is what forged um, what we did those first few months. So it's 
It's always a funny thing to hear for me uh, to hear about inspiration, and because it makes cooking sound like such an art. And for me, cooking is much more of a craft, and it inspiration is something that I don't know. It's just what you cook is something that's that comes from so many different things. It's inspiration is something I th I think I've never really felt. But anyway, um, when inspiration, or what people call inspiration, fails, uh, constraint was a good thing. And also what I found very reassuring in the time when I was scared of everything was uh, the past and tradition. And uh, what we, my sister and I, have always liked to eat and the way we, we, we are used to eating. And also uh, what I've learned in, in very different structures, uh, uh, very traditional ways. I found that knowing this, knowing traditional technique, knowing traditional French cooking was something that was very reassuring. Like if, if worse came to worse and really I had no idea of what to do, I could always go back to doing a beurre blanc or something very traditional and that would just work, I guess, because it's always worked. And so in a time where everything is scary, I found that Tradition and, and technique is something that's ve that was very reassuring. Um, because the way we work is, I think, I mean, it was for a while a little bit too spontaneous. Uh, last year I was here to translate Pascal Barbeau's um, uh, talk about sp spontaneity and I had no idea things would get so spontaneous. So. It was a good thing I had reflected on it before because uh, what happened was crazy and the way we make our menus it's, is much more spontaneous than what I think anyone could imagine. Um, we have all these products and I'm not saying this is the good way, I'm even saying this is not the good way of doing things but um, and cook up things the way we feel like it. Uh, menus change every day and uh, Katya prints the menus out, always a little bit too late, uh, 45 minutes before uh, the clients come. So I tell her what we're cooking, and sometimes she gets it right, sometimes she doesn't. And then, so she prints it out, and by the time menus are printed, it's already too late. So whatever she, she printed out, or whatever I told her, sometimes I didn't even tell her the right thing, is what we're going to do. And so we always have a menu that's uh, in the kitchen, so if we forgot something that we, we prepared or got something wrong, we have a reminder of what we're supposed to be serving people. Um, so <laughs> this is... <laughs> so again, a very bad example of how to, how to open a restaurant. I think it's, it's not a good idea. Um, so... Uh, what was I saying? This? Yes, yeah, so all of this makes you feel not that comfortable. It's like you're always on the edge, um, being judged. You're giving, ev give, giving everything. We, um, after four months, we closed the restaurant for two weeks vacation, which was um, necessary, I think, for us and, and the whole team who's been working really hard and whom I thank very much. Um, and we look forward to the future, but I'm also, we're also very nervous that in those two weeks everyone has forgotten us and you come back and your restaurant is empty and all of that is like something, a new, a new fear that's within you and that like Renee told me yesterday, that just doesn't leave. So it's, it's actually scary be, knowing that you're going to be scared for the next 10 years. <laughs> But it's also very exciting, and I think it's, <laughs> I'm sure. And um, so, but it's also very exciting, and what we really do want is to learn how to, how to cook in the future, and how to cook to make this last. Um, what's uh, interesting is learning about yourself while you're building your, your own future, and, so the, for, in that sense, uh, this opening was a huge success because we learned so much about ourselves and we learned so much about the people we work with. It, 
it, that was a, a huge success. But I have to say, um, I had I had a yoga teacher who used to tell me, "Feel the pleasurable pain," and I found that this expression was something very true for a restaurant opening. It's like you're almost, it's a discomfort that's almost painful, but yet it's very constructive and it, it makes you grow so much that it gives you pleasure. And I think that cooking in a, in a very new restaurant is about that, is about um, taking pleasure in what you do. And it's the only way to give, to give it to other people. So I think now that things are going so fast, it, the truth is still what it was maybe 50 years ago. Cooking is about hospitality and uh, sharing what you love with other people and making them want to love you and come back to see you. So that's it. Um, I really wanted to thank everyone here uh, for having us again. It was a huge honor. And thanking, I really wanted to thank our team who's been, they, they've been so great and so, so brave. And it was, it was so touching to see them work so hard for us. It's also, it's also very new and, and that, was, that was fantastic. So thank you, thank you very much. And